A healthy relationship is very, very critical to sustaining the atmosphere for a successful marriage or any kind of relationship. A healthy relationship creates a sustainable atmosphere for individuals to coexist together. Let's get down to the very first sign of a healthy relationship. The very first sign that a relationship is healthy. Number one is that you connect with one another. Relationships that are healthy fosters connection. Relationships that are healthy, they foster connection. Wherever there is healthy relationship, you will always find connection. What that means is that individuals don't avoid each other. Remember what I told you yesterday. One of the major signs that your relationship is unhealthy is that you avoid each other. You avoid one another. Husband avoid wife. Wife avoid husband. And we do that strategically. We do that manipulatively and deceitfully. And like I said... Only a fool will be fooling someone and think that you are the only person that is wise, all right? So never forget this. Avoidance is a sign that a relationship is not healthy. Connection is a proof that relationship, relationships are healthy. Wherever you see health, you will see connection. It's critical to note that wherever there is a healthy relationship, the parties involved build what we call emotional bridges. They intentionally work together. They intentionally work together. So there is connection, all right? And where there is connection, we intentionally work together. Number two, number two, you communicate with one another. You communicate with one another in a healthy relationship environment people communicate with one another husband communicates with wife wife communicates with husband and one of the most amazing thing is that there are three things that happens in such an environment they speak they listen and then they negotiate These are three things you will find in a healthy communication environment. Where there is communication and it is healthy, you find that we are given permission to speak. The husband gives the woman the right to speak. The woman gives the man the right to speak her thoughts, her feelings, speak her desires, speak her interests. So it's critical to know that one of the things you find in a healthy uh, relationship is that the individuals have given each other the right to speak, okay? And when I give you the right to speak, I do not interject, interrupt. I do not interfere when you are still expressing your thoughts. Number three, number three, you trust one another. There's another powerful secret when it comes to, uh, you know, creating a healthy relationship environment. You trust one another. Yes. What that means is that you don't give each other the reason to doubt, distrust, and disbelieve yourselves. All right? I'm going to say that again. You trust one another. This is one of the major keys to having a healthy relationship. You trust one another. And in trusting one another, what you don't do is that you don't give each other the reason to doubt, to disbelieve, to distrust your commitment or your commitment to the vows and the promise that you made to the relationship or to the other party. You don't do anything that creates doubt, that creates disbelief or distrust, all right? You don't create it. Let's quickly move to number four. In healthy relationships, relationship environment, they honor one another. You honor one another. You regard and treat one another with utmost respect. You regard and treat one another with utmost respect. Not minding the class you all belong to, 
You may be a senior politician and your wife has never been around the corridors of power. Once you are married, you treat one another with utmost respect. If you choose to marry a man or a woman, whilst you are dating, you treat one another with utmost respect. You, you value what your partner values and you treat your partner's values with utmost respect. You recognize it and you respect your partner's values. You don't play, you don't downplay, you don't demean, you don't belittle, you respect one another. It is called the code of honor. Number five thing you can use to know that a relationship, the major indicator, major sign that a relationship is healthy. Number five is what I call empowerment. You empower one another. You empower one another. And there are several dimensions to this. Number one, you give each other space and you come back to share space. This is how it goes. You give each other space and then you come to share space. You give each other space and you come to share space. It's like the candle. You have the wax outside and you have the thread inside, all right? It is a combination of the wax and the thread that makes you have light. When you kindle the fire on, on a candle, the reason why it burns is not just because of the thread. It's also because of the wax, all right? Watch this carefully. They both share space and give each other space. So you can see the thread burning and you can see the wax surrounding there is a place where they share space and yet there is also a place where they give each other space every relationship that is going to be very successful is a relationship that is empowering what that means is that I give my partner the space to be him and she gives me the space to be me and then we come to share space to be us it is critical that we learn to give and share space. You learn to give and share space with one another. You allow your partner to pursue her dreams. You allow your partner to pursue his dreams, goals, interests, whatever it is that makes your partner happy. If he likes movie, you allow him. You don't attack what your partner loves. You don't attack what your partner is interested in. You don't speak badly about what your partner truly value. You empower one another. Number six, because of our time, we're going to be twisting it a little bit now. It's critical for you to understand this, that you also celebrate one another. You celebrate one another. This is very, very central to having a healthy relationship. You recognize and celebrate one another's uniqueness. Highly successful and healthy relationships, they recognize and they celebrate their individual uniqueness. All right? They don't attack each other's uniqueness. They accept it. They accept the uniqueness of one another. So, so yes, my, my wife maybe likes to dance and maybe I don't like to dance. I accept the fact that that's what she loves. It's her interest and I celebrate her uniqueness. It is critical to know that you can never attack somebody's uniqueness and have the person offer you their very best. Write that down. You can never attack a partner's uniqueness and have the partner give you their maximum best in any relationship. You never look at your wife and say, you talk too much. No, 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 no. That's your wife's uniqueness. And you don't look at your husband and say, you are too slow. You don't make decisions in your hurry. You are too slow. You are too slow. And you now give your husband the nickname, Baba, go slow. <laughs> right? No, no, no. You don't talk to your husband like that. Your husband is likely a phlegmatic person. All right? Who takes his time to think through before he makes a decision and you may be just a sanguine person who doesn't need to think once you have an idea it looks nice you jump into it see your husband is your balance he is your thinking person you are the talking person and if you are a choleric who is a doing person then your husband is your balance he helps you to think through what you want to do 
And if you're a phlegmatic person, a choleric partner is the reason why you, a thinking partner, will get a lot of things accomplished. It is about understanding each other's uniqueness, not attacking it. Number seven. In healthy relationships, they forgive one another. You are quick to forgive. Swift to forgive. When your partner comes to ask for forgiveness, you are willing to give your partner such forgiveness. You are willing to bequeath it to your partner. You are willing to say, you know what, you can have it. And like I shared with you yesterday, please once you forgive, make a departure from the event. To err, to err is human. You are bound to make mistakes from time to time in your own life too. Don't treat your partner in a way you will not love to be treated. Don't make reference to something your partner did and ask for forgiveness if you will not want someone to make reference to the same. In essence, how you will want someone to treat you is exactly how you treat somebody else. If you don't want someone to remind you of what you've done in the past, why remind them about what they did in the past when they've asked you for forgiveness? And remember that you don't need to wait for them to come before you go to them because the Bible tells you that if you have an unforgiveness, your prayers will not be answered. So call the person and say, look, I forgive you. Whether the person asks for it or not, just say, look, you offended me and I forgive you. If the person is able to acknowledge immediately and say, I'm sorry about what I did, that's okay. Let's move on. Number eight, in a healthy relationship environment, they protect one another. They protect one another. You will not expose your partner to the insult of your friends. You will not in any way allow or empower your family members or your friends to speak in a manner that is derogatory, insultive, belittling, demeaning to your partner. You protect one another. You shield your partner from your family members. You shield your partner from your friends. You don't allow anybody to have a reason to insult your partner. You care for one another. Oh, this is beautiful. You care for one another. In healthy relationship environments, we care for one another. It is very critical. You communicate care, affection, and intimacy in such a manner that your partner will recognize and appreciate it. You communicate care. You communicate appreciation. You communicate intimacy to your partner in such a way that it lets your partner know that this is my own way of saying I love you. So it's important for you to understand that you must find a way to communicate your love to your partner in such a way that your partner is able to internalize the understanding that what you are doing is a show of care, is a show of affection, is a show of intimacy. And lastly, you must learn to pray for one another. You must learn to pray with one another. The greatest thing you must learn to do as, uh, as people in relationship is pray for one another. Here's the reason why. You can never hate someone you pray for. You see why you need to pray for one another. You can never hate anybody you truly pray for. There's something praying for one another. There's something it does to us. It kills the flesh. It kills, it kills hatred. It kills unforgiveness. Because how do you talk to God about someone you truly hate? How do you talk to God about that person? I mean, you can't fool God. If, if you want to fool yourself, you can't fool God. So when we pray for one, one another, what we do is that we increase the love that we have for each other or for one another. So praying for one another is very, very powerful. And then praying with one another. Where we sometimes just join hands. Where we kneel down together. However your family likes to do that. You call it devotion. You call it agreement. There are different ways family, families pray together. However your family wants to do that. There must be a moment where we pray with one another. 